You are listening to the Tuesday Review. I'm Nathan. Uh, as always, joined by James and Callum. How you going, boys? Not bad. Not bad. Um, it's our first show of 2024. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. How was everyone's break? We had a week off last week. Yeah, not bad. Tiring. I mean, yeah, I didn't have much of a break, but yeah, yeah. it was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've been working hard on the YouTube uh, today. I, 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 there's going to be more coming in drips. Mm. Just a bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, I've set up, you know, it's a lot of work uh, yeah. doing it myself as well, um, by myself. I've got one episode a day coming out for the next six days or so, and then there's those Star Wars specials. And there's Oof. like nine or ten of them. Oh, my God. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? I have to think about it. Those are going to get down uh, <laughs> Downvoted. They'll the, all get downvoted, yeah. A thumbs down. <laughs> we'll get those YouTube reaction videos against us, these yeah. incels. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll, or we'll get a following we don't want of people <laughs> yeah. who are like, oh, these guys. Yeah, no. We're right, but not for the reasons yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, those guys are right, but... <laughs> but uh, so that took a lot of work. You know, it's like, oh, what, half an hour for my computer to render a video, so I spent all day on it. Yeah, it, it takes all. Um but I'm like, I guess just release one Star Wars special every eight hours just to get them out of the way. Don't overdo it. But yeah, I mean, whatever works. Yeah. Like I've just scheduled them all up. Okay. I'm yeah. Like, just get yeah. them out the way so we I can mean, move on. If you, if you have the fortitude, it's best to just listen to them all back to back to get our, yeah, our whole, it's the whole yeah, saga. Yeah. There's a Star Wars saga and then there's the Tuesday review Star Wars saga. Yeah, so they go for about the same runtime, if not hours. Yeah, I think they're longer than yeah. than the movies. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I've got um, for that. Hopefully, we're going to do a lot more shenanigans this year. Yeah, I mean, it's trip. still early, uh, still still busy with other behind the scenes stuff. But hopefully, as the year goes on, we'll uh, have a bit, bit more video content, some more interviews. Uh, you know, the film festivals and other conventions, we'll hope to visit those and cover those. Push our luck a little bit more. Yeah. Just Ask send off some free emails. Free stuff. Be like, let's work together. What yeah. do you do? We're on the radio. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you have a following? We don't know. Mm, no one tells us our radio like, numbers. There's a few <laughs> few listeners here and there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, one but... One of our videos has like 500 views. That, I still don't believe that. I, I don't. That, that doesn't oh no, make sense. it's real. Only because you know they they stop watching after a minute. <laughs> but that's what I was saying to Nathan. I'm like, still we know counts. people view, but how long <laughs> yeah. do they view? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but so this year hopefully um, is a big year for the show. So look, last year was a big year, biggest year we have, we ever had. We'll yeah. make it a big year, James. Yeah, we'll make it a big year. I mm. think now we're putting in the effort. That's why we, you know, that's kind of, we just got to yeah. maintain it's our just, momentum. Yeah, it's just, I mean, we always, we've talked about before, it's just trying to fit it into our schedules and, and uh, you know, not put too much pressure on each other and like, yeah, it's, we're still working it out. So yeah. hopefully this, last year we kind of did ha- the end, the last half of the year was sort of figuring it out and doing some stuff and then... Oh, the Alum's rocket up to join the boys as well. Alum deep. Um, he's, uh, he's just grabbing a chair. What was I saying? Um, it's, last it's year about was a big manage, yeah. La- manage last, our own yeah. expectations. Last year we, we, we were kind of it was like the draft, and now I don't think we're fully there yet, but we're we're in a better position. Like we yeah. know what yeah. a bit more. What yeah. we had and some experience. We I know think, what we're in for. You know, we kind of had a bit of a mindset change last year. We we're like, you know what? As James sort of kicked it off with packs, and he's like, "What's well, the worst people can say? No, yes, yeah. you know exactly." What? And then it's James like, got his tickets, and then we scrambled to figure out. A yeah, video. you guys were like, Alan, oh. Alan was too late. He was like a day late. But that's the thing is now we know. Net, now we know. Yeah, and if like if if, if one of us can't make it, then Alan, grab a pair of headphones if you haven't got some in the bag. Oh yeah, hang on, I'll grab them for him. Um, but yeah, no, uh, we did a lot last year, especially with Miff. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring you more festival content this year, more exclusives. Yeah, tune in when we get free tickets to the sex bar. Um, you want free tickets where? Uh, I believe it's called the sex bar. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Uh, it's, a review. it's a review show and we're going to review it. Don't pretend you don't know, Nathan. <laughs> but yeah, so that's Isn't the that kind of like stuff. like a shop though? Nah, I'm sure things are that's sold That's sexy there. land. Uh, no, I'm getting, it's, I'm getting um, my things confused. Yes, the sex part is uh, <laughs> it's an expo. It's an expo of... <laughs> Yes. Of our most base kind of desires, I think, is the okay. best description. The reason it's funny is because it was hosted next to an anime convention last year, which is hilarious. Oh, wow. Yeah, those two, those two demographics do not intersect. I mean, <laughs> or, I mean they kind of do. They do, but for the bad But I don't reason. think I don't think that 
I don't think they want each other's base, but they... I like, mean, one side probably the wants worst, the other side's base. Yeah, but the, the worst yeah. kind of people would attend both, if that makes sense. The worst <laughs> people out of both bases attend both. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see like what you're the saying. The furry kind of people. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay, let's move yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is what happens when Alan comes in. <laughs> hey, how you going, Alan? But happy, happy 2024, everyone. Hey, I'm just saying we deserve some free tickets and uh, we'll we'll review it. And we'll you, it send off the e- you send off the emails. You manage yeah, that. We'll, we'll, and we'll, we'll get a fair shake down. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a free ticket's a free what? ticket. What? Okay, so do you have any soundboard stuff for this? We haven't updated. Don't this. be rude. Yeah, we don't have. We haven't updated the I soundboard. No, in I've, a been, while. I've been too preoccupied is, with the YouTube. Is there anything the on there that we haven't used before? Because we keep using the same uh, one. So we've got the dog barking. I oh, know we use that fail, one. The heartbeat. No, we use that one. The jazz music loop. That. I think we use that once. It's just. I think we used them all. Yeah, we're getting not. We we need crickets. to update. Well, sorry, it. Have, we used, have we used the crickets? Yeah, definitely. We'll refresh it. Yeah, right. we'll refresh it. Um, um, so anyway, what we do on the show is we review things. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's, that's the point. Yeah, we'll, and we'll the, review anything, you know, like um, a house, a car. You tell us. You, you <laughs> give us an invite. Um, send to something, we'll, we'll rock up. <laughs> yeah. So are we doing a roundtable episode this week? Yeah, just take it easy for uh, the first episode of the year. We'll just go around and talk about yeah. what we've been watching lately. Uh, who would um, like to start? Well, first, go. I got I watched this show called Evil. Oh now, yes, Alan's here. He's been. I've got him onto it. I've been telling him for a while to watch it, and he yeah. got around to it. Have you finished the first season yet? Uh, no, I'm still at the same spot. Basically, the last episode of the first okay. season. Okay. What do you What are your thoughts initially? Um, as we discussed off air, it really does kind of scratch the itch of uh, the monster of the week that you would have in um, something like Supernatural. Yeah, but. As I am the resident skeptic about, you know, yeah, certain yeah. paranormal activities. Um, I think it. Alum's our resident Ayla Mao um, denier. Hmm. Skeptic. What's that? What was that famous skeptic? Um, they parodied him on Late Night with the Devil. Um, he was the anti Yuri Geller guy. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, my bad. I was going to say that's our. Alum's our that guy. Yeah. yeah. Like, I like to look for a more scientifically sound explanation in these sorts of things and the show does that very well like like any kind of um we'll call it ghost hunter group they'd be you know a skeptic except rather than them being in on it in this case the skeptic James is, Randy. Sorry. is okay. an actual licensed in the show a psychologist okay and uh, she's a forensic psychologist who teams up with a priest uh, who's david costa plays by the guy who played luke cage um and uh, basically he's he's a priest in training i should say and he basically has to go around uh, and investigate hauntings and miracles and that sort of thing. Now, I okay. want to be a priest. Yes. Um, but that's like being, you know, trying to become an archaeologist, thinking you're going to be Indiana Jones. In reality, <laughs> it's just like paperwork and like yeah. digging and... E- eating really, really flavorless wafers all day. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like <laughs> if, you, if you become a priest and you're like, I'm gonna, it's going to be like The Exorcist, I'm going to be Drinking like Russell Crowe in that movie but it's with one, the accent. But it's one of the professions that don't really have a problem with alcoholism. That's true. What? Oh, a lot of priests are drunks. Oh, wait, okay, no, they I'm, don't have a problem with it. Yes, yes. It's Catholicism, I thought, I thought baby. You're, you know, you're like, they don't drink, I'm like... Glug, glug. Crazy. No, they're there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's part of the culture. It is. But, they um, just say blood of Christ, next thing you know, they're tanked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so Evil's a good show, though. Yes. Um, I'm glad you're into it. So, yeah, just it, a, um, a little more, sorry, on the, on the recap side. Yeah. Of, um, it seems that a lot of things, again, from Kate Bouchard, who's a psychologist's perspective, there's very much a like mental uh, health slash scientific explanation of what goes down. And frequently, that's what you. So she's the Scully, the skeptic. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And yes. then he's the Molder, the, yes. yeah, the believer. Yeah, and it's and, obviously clear. But then in there's the... also uh, I forget the guy's name. Um, they also have the tech expert. Yes, he's an Indian Muslim man from the UK slash America, and he's, he's what's like... the actor's name? He's been in tons of stuff. Uh... Look him up quickly. But yeah, it's it's um, I like it because again, Asif Manvi. Yes, Asif yes, yeah, Manvi. Yeah. I think. Yeah, um, it's again. It's not like everything's a ghost, which is, you know, I think a crocker, whatever. Because you're basing this in the real world, like, obviously, with something like Supernatural, there's a suspension of disbelief that this is a, I guess, parallel yeah, world. Yeah, but it's a, it's a Supernatural yeah. show, yeah. so you'd expect it. sometimes it's revealed to be real. Mm. But you're saying this takes a different approach where it's like, sometimes it isn't, sometimes it is. Yeah, or, or like, most like. of the time, it kind of airs on people just being generally terrible Super- human beings. Okay, yeah. Oh, without and- spoiling anything for Alan Deep here. It goes in an or interesting me, direction it, yeah. for now. Um, 
it goes in an interesting direction because it changes from being a network TV show to streaming show yeah. halfway through season two, mm. roughly. I, I remember because you recommended to me and I remember it apparently gets a lot better, higher budget. And then co- I think COVID happened and there was delays with the next season. But what up? Are they up to three now? We've had three seasons. So four is... And four has started filming. Okay, yeah. Sick. So maybe when four comes out, I'll try and catch... It's I say that, but I don't, <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of like... Even up to current, you're not really sure on whether the kind of... We'll say the show is Grand Conspiracy, because there's always that kind of... Yeah, overarching. There's always like that overarching kind of plot or plan or conspiracy in these kinds of shows that have just have to, you have to have a story. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you, even now, you're not... 100% sure whether it's kind of just like... Obviously, you see imagery and all that kind of supernatural stuff, but it's never really explained whether it's real or fake. And that's the kind of thing that okay. I think Alan digs yeah. about it. That's the... Where it's like, even like the grand plan, it's like, you know, with the X-Files, the UFOs actually do exist. Like, in yeah, the kind yeah. of the overarching yeah. narrative. In Supernatural, it's actually... Yeah. All, it's all real, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you're still unsure um, in evil, yeah. even right at the end of the third season. You know, nasty stuff is happening. But you don't know if it's supernatural yeah. or not. And I, mm. I think that also adds to even the scare factor a little bit more because y- you can always explain things where it's like, oh, the ghost did it, you know? And that's, you know, a goof. But ultimately, again, if you're just dealing with people who are genuinely evil human beings, yeah, I think that's the probably the ultimate, you know, of, uh, like yeah. f- fearful thing because that's real. Yeah. There are genuinely the humans who are the bad there. guys yeah. the whole time, yeah. Um, yeah. I like that, you know, uncertainty that that you kind of push through when you're watching the show, where it's like, all right, is okay, yeah. we explained it. Well, wait a minute, what about that part? Yeah, you know, that that really, I appreciate that. I'm sure someone's made this joke, but so it's every episode like Scooby Doo where they unmask the ghost and or demon, and it's a guy. Stop! Not always. It's not all. Some of them are different kinds of mysteries. Yeah. But he basically... And you also mm. deal with miracles. Yeah. So, it's like some of it's miracles. Some of it's like, like what? Posit- more positive, yeah. not just haunting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like, there's one character who maybe sees the future, and it's kind of like investigating that. I'm like, is it... There's no real villain. It's like, is this a parlor trick or is it real? Mm. It's that... Um, Interesting. I like it. Uh, I'm glad Alan's enjoying it so far. I am. There's, there's been, like, obviously, no show is perfect. Yeah. Uh, there was you know, severance. Oh, would, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like a word with you. Oh, uh, True yeah, Detective true. Season 1 as well. Is yeah, perfect. True Detective Season because I was going to say, like, there's some there's some incel angles and other things here and there. <laughs> yeah, which I'm yeah, like, yeah. Right, There's some writing issues oh, in yeah. one of the episodes. <laughs> yeah, we'll, okay. we'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I'll have to, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but good watch if you're into, again, for me, it very much, Nathan, I guess, knows well that what kind of show I'd be really into. And this re- very much fits the bill. You'd love, have you seen The X-Files? I think you'd really dig it. I was too young at the time, I think. No, yeah. but yeah, but as a grown man, trust me, it's I feel me, like it's a, it's X-Files a is a very big commitment, though. Yeah, it has yeah, like I 10 know. seasons. But it has like, the uh, agent... Like 25 yeah. episodes each. It has Mulder, who's like, you know, the simp. He's like, oh, aliens are real. I know it. I love them so much. He, mm. Not literally. But then you got Scully, who's like, you're a moron. Yeah, they're, there's got to be a rational so Especially me and you in a show as well. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like, Scully would be like, Mulder, I can see the strings from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, you don't know that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, you know, going back to what we were saying before as well, Alan, what, uh, where do you think we could take the show this year? Um, I would probably say more, more like, what do you want to call it? Video content, because that's mm. that is the future, even though it's been going on for ages. Mm. But also maybe something live. Yeah, like obviously, I think we'll wait till we amass a little bit more of an audience. Yeah, but I wouldn't mind doing something live with the people. I think yeah, I think we'd need a bit of a bigger audience, and then do a live thing. But I think yeah, if we do more video content. I think we'll get more because all our YouTube content at the moment is like audio. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely have room to grow. And what was, we're talking off here as well. Our problems are mostly time and space. Yeah. Time, and space, we, money, everything. Yeah. But money, yes, money, but like we have basic equipment to do yeah. whatever we want. It's yeah. not necessarily a money issue, it's a more of a time and a space issue. Mm. Um, and if we can solve those kinds of things, then we can do a lot more. Because I know, I think we might have even talked about it, like putting GoPro in here while we're, uh, yeah, you know, like or... setting up setting up our live audience listeners with the soundboard so they can touch the soundboard buttons for us. Yeah. <laughs> Only if they pay. It's one of those. It's one of those things. Because <laughs> yeah. we'll otherwise, Twitch. people would just spam. People <laughs> yeah, would just yeah. spam. Yeah, pay us a dollar and you can touch the soundboard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but also, um, I guess having the audience sentiment of like, we really want you to review this. 
Yeah, have, like, yeah, we definitely want say. more feet. Yeah. But see, we got we did get to a point with the show where we we're like, please tell us what to do, and then we were like. You know what? We don't care because it's not fun if you tell us to watch a crappy movie and then we see it and we hate it. And so we're in this kind of weird place. Yeah, like I, I, I agree. I'd with that. say it's about. I, I'd but say also, you don't want us to hate watch something. But if you've if you found something that's a real diamond in the rough, it's about good. Oh, faith. that's yeah, that's different as well. Good yeah. faith arguments versus bad faith yeah. arguments. Yeah. We don't want people to be like, you should watch this really bad thing. It's actually terrible. Because yeah. I'm like, well, what's the? But point? we'll also take on stuff like. You know, arguments like Tokyo Drift is the best Fast and the Furious. No, and that's I mean, not fair. That Transformers is actually that's good. That's not fair because we'll also, you, you we'll also fight those me. fights if people want to fight those. Also, but it's like with um, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's and uh, the Justice League, where you like you guys can do oh one hundred uh, extra yeah. content that I'm not really interested. In, or if like me and Callum want to do something, you guys aren't yeah. interested. In. And that's hundred percent another one of the things we could focus on a little bit more this year is like putting out more content. We don't all have to be interested in it, mm. but I'm like, if we do things independently, it just furthers the growth of the show. That's mm. also a positive. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, me and Alan yeah. did the Five Nights at Freddy's bonus. You mm. boys weren't interested, and it's it's just extra. Well, I, I wanted people. to see the movie, but I wasn't like going to rush to see it just to no, talk no. about it we, sort of we, watch, we watch it at home that's the thing but like uh, but that's like the thing is like we, there was that point on the show of, like a uh, while yeah, ago where we were we, going to see new movies when we were and, just yeah. watching stuff to review it yeah. and it was like i didn't even enjoy so watching yeah. movies anymore and then yeah. we got to a point where like i want to watch movies again because i like watching movies and if we talk about them great and if we don't great yeah, it's all about stuff we want to do, and if, if you know. Yeah, exactly. but also it's good to to hear from listeners is like, what do you like? Yeah. What do you don't like? Especially or, like um, something foreign language, because again, we don't delve too much into it. So we yeah, do, we do like some stuff. But if, I watched a foreign I, language yeah, movie I, today. I, yeah, I, I watch a lot of foreign language stuff, but I don't I don't really talk about them on the yeah. show. I mean, we, if we they're freq- classics, then we sh- you should. We be. we frequently end up getting something that's Depend- popular in general as a foreign language film, rather than maybe somebody who's watched them all as a kid throw something in there and you're like well i didn't see this like that's a thing yeah, yeah. it's like the cholet thing yeah. we did where it's like i wonder if when we get to the cholet episode for youtube do you reckon that'll hit big there's a chance hmm there's an audience up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's another think, interesting i think cracked was actually discussing four of the best indian movies of all time like the other day indian and, we've and, talked about this and, before and indian, was, was indian cinema does cracked even exist anymore uh, whatever it was whatever they are now but, uh, There's something out there. We talked. We've talked about this a lot on the show. Indian mm. cinema and Bollywood in general has like basically saved cinema <laughs> in the recent, especially well, our local chains. Yeah, I mean it's popular in our area, so I mean that probably helps yeah. them keeps our local chains open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, All right. Anyway, should we talk about? Yes, we should yeah, talk about some films. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, oh, look, I guess I'll start. I watched the um, the Three Amigos. Oh, classic. A classic. Um, it's Galaxy Quest and Tropic Thunder before those films. It's like the first kind of like actors. Yeah, pretending. Actors playing, actors pretending they're characters from their films. And then they get stuck in like a real life situation. They have to pretend to be those People characters. mistake yeah. them. or Yeah. It's good. Steve Martin, Martin Short and uh, Chevy Chase. Yeah. Classic, such a good movie. I think I've seen this movie. No, you probably not. It seems familiar. It's in the cultural DNA. Yeah, you probably would have you seen know. maybe parts it, it, of it. It's or, one of but those, it's a great movie. It's, it's one classic. of those movies that's been referenced so many times. Yeah, by yeah. So, I'm sure there's a Simpsons parody somewhere. Oh yeah. So it's probably you're probably aware of it vaguely. Hmm. This isn't the one where the guy had to almost suck on the other dude's ass, right? Because he thought a snake bit him. Or when he sits on the cactus. Maybe. What's that? Yeah. What's that? That's from. Something. Yeah, I may, I it remember. might be the same film. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try and find out. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With my search be careful yeah. what you Google. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his phone's seen worse. <laughs> um, the other films I've seen recently, I watched Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. Yeah, we talked about it off air. Yeah, um, I liked it. Um, it has a very uneven tone, though. Mm. Um, it, I was it's not sure if it wants to be like a Kevin Smith kind of meta viewer skew comedy-esque kind of slasher or like a super serious movie hmm. and those tones clash because the super serious stuff is great the violence is great it's lots of practical gore hmm. and then in, and then there'll be like some kind of almost Jane Silent Bob-esque humor and I'm like it, 
it's a little jarring. I think I was talking about it with Nathan because I haven't seen it, but it, it was one of those movies where I'm like, look, it's probably not going to be good, but it's a slasher movie, so all the boys are probably going to want want to go see it, and just we didn't have time. I mean, I waited for streaming because um, I just don't have the money right yeah, now. So. No, <laughs> uh, it probably it wasn't probably worth seeing uh, going to the movies for, but um, uh, and I was talking to you about it, and I was saying like, because it's based on that fake trailer from Grindhouse, the Robert Rodriguez Tarantino um, crossover movie, um, where the whole thing was like, it was like a parody of like Halloween, except it's Thanksgiving. And so it was the, the whole thing that it was funny was that they were playing it straight. Like it's like a Halloween slasher movie, but it's at Thanksgiving yeah. and the knife goes into the turkey and it's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the whole joke. So now they've made a... Uh, full length movie out of that and i was like they should have just played it straight make it a straight horror movie and yeah. any humor will come from the absurdity of trying to do a halloween style <laughs> even if it's shot for shot halloween yeah <laughs> that'd be hilarious and just replace the pumpkin with a turkey like it, that it would be so funny yeah um but instead it seems like they're trying to be goofy and self-referential and also kind of scary and it it doesn't know what it wants to yeah. be, and it suffers for that, but I still enjoyed it. Like, I enjoyed the slasher moments, I yeah. enjoyed the gore, I enjoyed that I, um, element. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'll never watch it, like, I'll probably watch it eventually, but, um, yeah, I, I wasn't too hot on it, but I, I think um, I'll give it a go one day. Yeah. Um, the other notable movies I have to talk about while we've got a little bit of time, I, me and you watch The Automat. Yes. This was a more interesting one. It's kind of, you know, a bit of a slice of life kind of documentary. It's like a hist- almost like History. a historical features Mel Brooks. Um I so guess it's a, it's as a, a main narrator. So yeah, it's a twenty twenty one documentary. Um it's kind of so the automat was like a restaurant chain. Basically like it's a retro futuristic vending machine, essentially. You've got sort like of. Chefs behind You've the seen, scenes cooking food, yeah. and they put it in a little window, and you put in your nickels, and then it spits food out. For a lot of people, like, maybe Loki is where they've seen it, where it's like, there's little windows in the wall, and you go up, and you put a nickel in, and the window opens, and you get a slice of pie or something. Yeah. Um. So, basically, from the early 1900s, when that was invented, to, like, the 80s, or whenever the last one was it was like 1992 something like that yeah um by that point they were pretty much all gone except for one um but yeah it was like a big thing in new york and philadelphia um where you know people would go in in this working in the city to have lunch or dinner at the automat where you just go in there's no service you just go up to the thing and they're cooking behind the scenes putting it in the the sort the of window, yeah. yeah, the receptacle, and then you open the, put in your money, open the window, and it's this cool sort of, um, almost sounds like retro futuristic. It yeah, kind of is. Yeah, um, I liked it, it's and it's just like it's a... charting the history of that, yeah. and and Mel Brooks and other other people are talking about their time, like how they remember it and what used to happen there and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I did like it. I liked it a lot. I kind of, if it was kind of hopeful. It's like a moment in time yeah. and a more hopeful. Do you remember when we watched that Y two K documentary? Yeah, it's and that, we're like, it's that, but in the twenties. Yeah, it's, it's like, like uh, 20s, you know, like look, the fifties. Yeah, know? it's like, like looking. Yeah. It's like it used to be technology was so hopeful. Yeah. It's like it's going to make so everything better, and now we look at technology and it's all scary. And yeah, it's like it's, it's going to kill no, us. AI is going to take yeah, take job. over. Yeah. The robots are going to kill us. Whereas, yeah, I feel like we look back sometimes and we're like, wow, it was so optimistic at, yeah. at certain points in history. Um, I guess we've gotten so used to technology and it's moved, it's developed so fast that we're sort of, I, we're I over, think not over it. I was but, talking about this off air. I'm like, it's the automat today would be a hit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that kind of concept. Well, I was thinking about it. I'm like... We would go to an automat restaurant. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of, people leave you alone. <laughs> it's like, you, you yeah. get what food but you want. This it's is, cheap. It's part of the retro futuristic thing as well. Is like, you know, this is like a whole nother discussion for another episode or not an episode at all. But like, my thing is automation, like Jetsons kind of level, like Star Trek level stuff should be the future. Yeah. So, you know, because there are people behind the scenes making the food and serving and stuff, but on, in in terms of the actual restaurant, like there's no, there's only the lady hot, uh, 
handing out change, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm like, if you could fully automate it um, to the point where people aren't working. That's true, yeah. But also, on top of that, people are I mean, a- able to live. Uh, I was going to say, that's the other half of this discussion, which is probably too big for this episode. Yeah. But it's like, you have that scenario, but we live in a capitalistic world and it would just mean people out of work. Exactly. And, and the businesses are just raking in 100% yeah. profit. But also, like, because no I was thinking, I'm like, there's... Solution to that. You eat the people. Eat, True. eat, eat the, the rich. No, the poor people. Cause I mean, no, well, then eat again, the rich. Because the rich just have to deal with food. The food <laughs> it's all automated. Um, Soylent greenback. Yeah. What was I saying? Uh, so the greed is people. Sorry. It's people. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, oh, what was I saying? I had a point to make. We're talking about... Um, yeah. So, because I was thinking like, and they say it in the documentary as well. What is like the modern, more recent incarnation of the automat? And there's not really anything like it. Um, fast food is different um, because the food is fast and they they serve it out quickly. Whereas the food at the automat was high quality, well prepared. It was just easily accessible, accessible and uh, cost uh, not cheap, but you know, it pretty. was done to there's, scale. There's, as yeah, well, there's a couple um, of things similar to that. There's obviously some Japanese restaurants where you paid the machine. That's true, and you put the ticket in, and then you, you don't even have to see the service. Sometimes some of the restaurants they just open a little flap, give it the food, mm. you sit down. And but eat. that's why, like, I think prison food does that count? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's also that um, uh, somewhere in the the Dutch, in the Netherlands, in the clubbing areas. They're like basically food vending machines that they're making the food fresh and they're putting them in little windows. Yeah, that's that's basically them. the automat. Yeah. So as the well. automat exists it in does. the Netherlands. Mm. Yeah, you that, I think they showed in the documentary on at one and, point. You know, and a lot of alcohol, yeah. and then you can have a feed. But my point is, is like you can bring the automat back, but it wouldn't be the same because the quality of the food they wouldn't put the uh, effort into it, and if they did, the prices would be so high that it wouldn't be what the automat was, which was you put... And now everything's so expensive, even fast food, which the whole allure of it was that it was fast and cheap. And now fast food costs as much as going to a bloody restaurant. And so we've just... we've, And that's why the documentary is kind of that nostalgic look, even though, you know, we never grew up in that time or lived in those cities, has that nostalgic of like, this is how things were. But also from, you know, my perspective, I'm like, we need to do better so that we don't have to worry about money so we can have cool technology where the food just comes out to you without having to worry about a person's paycheck or whatever. But that's this is a hard discussion for another if, if we're doing the futuristic good documentary. food, then, then hands down, Back to the Future 2 where they put the little pizza. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like rehydrated, yeah. yeah. Or, the or, pizza yeah. All right. While I'm hogging all the time on the show really quickly. Sorry, Callum. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I've only got so. a lot of movies to talk about. It's fine. I watched Unfinished Business re- again recently. I enjoyed this movie. Have you seen it, James? Is this the, the one Vince Vaughan. with Vince? It's got a different name somewhere. It's, it's called The Business Trip in Australia. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Movie. Is that the one with Mike Pancake? Yeah, Mike, Pancake, Mike Pancake, yeah. Pancake, yeah. I remember you guys kept talking about how funny it was, and I watched it once, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, you were going to say, I was like, Homeland no, in the but- cinema. <laughs> <laughs> No, but this movie gets a terrible review on Letterboxd. Oh, it's hilarious. When I went to yeah. like, rewatch it, everyone yeah. hates it. Why do I, they hate I think, it? I think about Mike Pancake all the time. Well, how's it like a wheelbarrow again? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, use that, I use that meme in real life quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Flugelschagen, good time, man. Um, I don't know why people hate this movie. Have you seen this movie? Let us know your actual thoughts. Don't be a robot. Watch it. It's funny. Yeah, it's a great performance by um, Dave, Dave Franco. Also, I think people don't like Dave Franco's... Franco performance because they think he's dumb but that's kind of the point of the character like that's the whole point of the character yeah i think people are misunderstanding the humor of the movie he obviously has some struggles like he's slow he's slow or he has some sort of um you know brain damage issue it's not explained um you know why he's slow it's not the point Hmm. and people like why is he acting this way i'm like because it's the character it was funny i mean maybe they wouldn't be able to get away with it today (laughs) necessarily yeah it does have that uh apatow-esque kind of yeah, you know, making yeah. making fun of people that may or may not be handicapped. Mm. I don't know, but it, it's still funny. I'm it's sorry. It's very funny. My, it's hilarious. My Alan's like looking says. at me like I'm a bad person. No, I didn't write the movie, sir. No, okay. no you know Alan will be laughing the hardest, <laughs> especially some like, of the scenes. Was we'll it, when, when that, is it when someone drops their books and and Homer just starts laughing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, ah! <laughs> the professor drops his uh, yeah. 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 That's Alan. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I rewatched that, and I don't understand why the ha- it gets so much hate. 
Like, I had a good time. James Franco has retroactively ruined Dave a lot of the... Fra- uh, no, Franco. no, James Franco has retroactively ruined a lot of the credibility of the Franco family. <laughs> so it's like uh, when you... If you were to go back and watch Dave Franco, you'd be like, is that the brother of that guy I hate? Yeah, <laughs> Thumbs down. Maybe. Um, I also, just quickly, I also rewatched watched The Running Man. Oh, so good. Um, and I saw Opera for the first time by Dario Argento. That I haven't seen. It's good. Uh, it's It's not perfect. I wanted to love it. It has some plot and writing issues I found hard to overlook. Mm. Remember That's remember when we saw um, Four Flies on Grey Velvet and I was like, oh, this will be fun. And I was just like, there are, it had, and I, we were just, I, mean, I was kind of like met on it. I'm like, it's a problem that a lot of these giallos have where it's like these convoluted plots that go nowhere that don't make sense. I mean, the plot's actually fine. It's a very kind of restrained small plot okay it doesn't go it's like it's the opera house in the lady's apartment or whatever mm. it's very small scoped but like these murders are happening and the cops are just like good luck i guess <laughs> and that's kind of where i have it they're just kind of just like is this like, in, are they italian cops yeah yeah that makes sense but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I'll, I'll be <laughs> rude. Oh, yeah, my. <laughs> all right all right okay donald don't be rude <laughs> um but it's like, you know, this lady is being stalked, harassed, and, like, every time there's a murder, she has to watch it, you know? She's a victim in each murder, essentially. Mm. Um, and it's like, why aren't the cops taking this more seriously? You know what I mean? They're just kind of just like, oh, that sucks. I'm sorry that happened to you. Good luck. Yeah. And they wave her out. And it's like, I have those problems with the movie's writing. Yeah. Wait, wait, is this lady getting murdered and resurrected, or is she just... No, she... Like, there's a there's a killer who kills people, and he makes her watch, right? So, she he'll, like, tie her up, and he puts, like, needles in her eyes so she can't look, like, yeah, look away. that's pretty stuff. surprising. I'm surprised the cops haven't charged her with being an accessory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you wit- that, I mean, that times every time someone witnesses a murder, they're like... <laughs> you, 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 you that sounds like a Philip K. Dick story or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, that law in the last episode of Seinfeld? The standby, stand, stand, <laughs> yeah. by. Yeah, it's like that, except more extreme. Uh, um, the cinematography and camera work in this movie is excellent, James. Yeah, I mean, you can't you those even the even the dodgy ones is like the creative. Like camera. Some of the I didn't realize there's a shot in Kill Bill with like a bullet going through a door hole or something. That's oh, and that, the camera followed. Yeah, yeah, allegedly that was inspired from this film. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and the effect is real nice. Mm. And the the practical, like the gore is amazing. Yeah. It's a very confronting, brutal jello. Yeah. It's very violent. Mm. Um, and the soundtrack is amazing. It's a mixture of heavy metal. When there's like the violent scenes, it's heavy metal. Yeah. And then when the violent scene stops, it goes back to like classical music and opera music. Mm. It's really interesting. Yeah. Um, I recommend it. Sounds it. fun. I'll have to watch it, yeah. yeah. It is good. And I watched Elevator to the Gallows today. What the hell is that? That is... Is that one of your crappy streaming? No, 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 no. no. So, so, I haven't watched this movie. It was directed by Louis M- Ma. Um, and it's the... I've listened to the soundtrack for this album countless times. Yeah. It's... Um, Miles Davis' uh, best album. Miles Davis' best album. And he did... He performed this album as like... A, he recorded it live while watching a silent version of the film. Oh, cool. So, it wasn't like, we're going to get you to score yeah. this movie. He got a band in a theatre. Oh, this is a real it. movie, Louis Mal, yeah. Yeah, and they watched um, and they watched the movie play out without sound, and he just scored to the vibe of what was happening yeah, on the screen. It's like the and sweetest, it was like one take. Yeah, cool. The sweetest, smoothest jazz you've ever heard. And it's his best album. And I've always listened, I've always enjoyed the music. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? I should watch the movie. Yeah. And I found it on HBO Max, and I watched it. Nice. Um, it, it's classic noir kind of fair, right? It's nothing. It doesn't change the game. Uh, it's 1958, so but it has a, it has some cool elements. There's a cool spy kind of story in there that's nice, but it's um, it's not it's not like it's filled with tension, sort of regret and murder. But it's not it's a standard kind of noir story at the mm. time. It's nothing special, but I would recommend it for the soundtrack alone. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yes. Uh, that's all I've got. Um, before we move to Callum, I'm going to uh, offer a quick correction. The film with the scene with the dude sucking on the other dude's ass, or about to suck on the other dude's ass to help out get remove snake venom, was in City Slickers 2. Yes. <laughs> oh, very good, Al. Yeah, I remember now. <laughs> good yeah. film. Because he sits on the cactus yeah. and he turns around and there's a snake and he's yeah. like, you have to suck. You have <laughs> yeah. to suck the venom out. Oh, man. All right, we'll be back right after this quick break. We'll Callum as we're watching. You are back on the Tuesday Review. Oh, listeners, if you knew what we were talking about, where we're off here. 
No. Mm. That's what we should offer the patrons. We, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we do I, you know, I still have the recordings of... Because be- back on the old show, I used to just record... Like, not from the... Oh, no. I used to record... Backup record in the studio. So, when we go to break... Can you burn those? Uh, those, those... Just destroy would, the whole machine. Like, Alan would be in jail. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're joking. We're good people. <laughs> well... I'd be in court. <laughs> well, you'd be in court, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, I've still, I've probably still got them. Anyway, all right, we're back. Um, obviously, we're taking it easy. We're not taking it too seriously this tonight. Um, yep. But, uh, Callum's been watching a lot of Blu-rays as he generally does. That's right. Slave to the stack. Whatever you. Man, I, I just started. I just started Maybe, a new look, stack of Blu-rays. You know, happy I am. Hmm. So for a long time. I'll, one second, Cam. Well, let me interrupt real quick. Um, I know you have a lot of films to watch. You're never going to get through them all. Maybe pick the most important ones. I, 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 don't, don't, I, don't, I, I don't mind like skipping my, this week, so Callum can go for as long as he wants. My stack's not that complicated this week. Hmm. Okay. Um, so for the since like November or whatever, I've been watching horror movies. I've been watching the anthologies. Yeah, after Spooktober, that's when you watch the horror movies. That's what the stack... I don't rank the rules. You're a slave maybe. to the stack. Hash, that's right, I am. Hashtag slave to the um, stack. So I watched all the Hellraisers. Uh, they were really good. Um... Obviously, the original trilogy is the best. First one's still the best, yeah. Yes, the first one's the best. The original trilogy is the best. Hmm. Um, after the original trilogy, it's like up and down. But the generally speaking, like all horror franchises, the further in you get, the worse it gets. Yeah, the cheaper um, they get. Inferno is my favorite of the non-trilogy movies because even though it's not very well acted, it is has a really... Is that the Scott Derrickson one? Yes. It has a really interesting soundtrack. The vibes are immaculate. It has like for listeners out there who I who uh, who know about kind of kind of weird RPGs on the PlayStation Two. It gives me very much Shadow Hearts vibes, which is like a specific noir gothic-y okay. kind of thing. Hmm. Um, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was I thought it was really interesting. Um, I I, I, talk, I we talked about it on the group chat. Like I like uh, Deader. Yeah, Hellraiser Deader. Uh, I just I think it's a bit interesting. Like the 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 cult and the the journalists uncovering the yeah 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 that that, that it was very um element of crime esque hmm. um eh, it was fine uh, it was better than that last I mean, what was the last one was the, the one with the Mexican boys no no that the was the second were... last one oh yeah that's so it was revelations and then judgment I think yeah. or the other way around um is is dead are the one with the really bored pinhead. Because I loved that. No, that was the last one, uh, Judgment, where, um, with the serial killer, where I was like, oh, they're just ripping off Seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, Not Heroes of Seven, like Seven, the David the, Fincher. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Um, that was hilarious seeing how, like, there's like a scene where he just sighs and I'm like, see, this is what I want. Like, that's character growth where he's like, <laughs> I've I'm been so doing done. this for so long. <laughs> yeah. um, so then I watched... Um, the prophecy movies, mm. the the prophecy um, uh, quintet. I did watch five, <laughs> uh, so I've watched a lot of listeners. I've watched a lot of bad movies, <laughs> you know, like on my journey through the the box sets. Mm. I couldn't do five. I, I had to turn the prophecy it off. five. Yeah, the prophecy five. Yeah, so like prophecies one to four, they get worse as they go on. With one being the best, mm. um, but five was unbearable. Not even Tony Todd could salvage what a train wreck that was. Yeah. It looked like I was watching like a high school movie, like some like they filmed it for a class. Mm. Like I, I know that's a horrible thing to say about like an actual produced no, movie, yeah. but like the way that the the scenes were shot, it looked terrible. The acting was bad. The story was everything. How about far? It was how awful. far did you get? Five minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah. No. No. I g- I gave it twenty minutes. So it had an hour left, mm. and then I was like, I can't. <laughs> So the prophecy. I haven't seen the prophecy before. I still haven't seen. It. Um, I, I bought that same set that you got. I haven't watched the first yet. one. Is incredible. Christopher mm. Walken plays the angel Gabriel, the angel of death, mm. um, who wants to essentially. He wants to cut Wait. out humans because he thinks that the relationship between him and God, or angels and God, I should say, was better before human beings because cool. God prefers us. Mm. He doesn't hate humans. He just we're interrupting the relationship that they yeah. had with God. Mm. Um, and he plays this really interesting role where he kind of likes humans, but we're like, an, uh, we're unnecessary, hmm. but he just does interesting things. Like the way he talks, the characters is fun. He gives a little girl a trumpet to blow on and it like blows up the windows of, like, <laughs> the, I think that's number one. Yeah. 
Um, and because it's like the famous horn, you know, like the in Judgment Day. Yeah. The, and I'm like, that's awesome to see that that kind of, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, there's all these other angels make appearances. Isn't Viggo Mortensen in one of them? Or am I misremembering? I don't think so. I'll look Nathan Gee looked at it. Um, it has a really, a, a really, ver- a version of Satan that I really liked is in this franchise as well. Mm. Though I think he appears in the second movie. Okay. Um, yeah, so the the first one's really great. It's the best. The second one is fun as well. Mm. Um, but that's where things start to get a little more loose with the story. Mm. Um, that's where the other angels like Lucifer starts to kind of, you know, take... Viggo, Viggo Mortensen plays the devil. Callum, are you serious? I didn't know it was Viggo, man. <laughs> you have the worst, like, face blindness. Oh, all white boys look the same to me. <laughs> we all Ben Affleck. It's um, a great role model. <laughs> Uh, it looked nothing. Th- oh yeah, no wait. Are you <laughs> sure you're looking at the right one? I'm looking at the prophecy. Is it the correct film? Wait, oh. the prophecies. Maybe there's two different prophecies. No, it stars Christopher Walken. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't. I didn't think Lucifer was in the original movie. Well, it says the devil. Ah, oh. well, oh, there you go, listeners. I'm. I, yeah, like I said, all white boys would say, "Put a beard on them." I don't recognize anyone. That's it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, yeah, like fake, was, fake mustache. Where did Superman yeah, go? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you, yeah, you'd be the guy who falls for Clark Kent pretending. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but anyway, there you go. That's why the devil was so good in the prophecy. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the the characters were interesting. I found the story to be strangely compelling, even though it's a simple plot. Mm. It's not scary. It's more like just like a chase thriller. So there's no horror scares so, yeah, or anything. It's, mm. it's like very. Ter- it has Terminator vibes because you can't kill Gabriel. Mm. So it's like you shoot him, he keeps coming. You lose him, he's coming to find you. Yeah. You know he. It's that type of thing. He can raise the dead. So it's like when he needs help using a computer or whatever, he'll just like find a teenager who's about to die and he'll be like bring them back and be like you know help me get this receipt from the computer. That's cool. Um, and it's stuff like that. Like there's some cool driving scenes. There's mm. you know some cool gunfights. It's I I will watch them and I will watch the fifth movie. I'll grip my teeth and then I'll let you know. <laughs> I couldn't. No no no. I just I couldn't. Um, the fourth one I suffered through. Yeah. Um, because it was kind of interesting. But you know. The, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, the prophecy was awesome. Um, and then. Uh, I watched The Howling. I, you know, it's a classic. I was, it was okay. Hmm. Yeah, I, it was. I have to watch I, that one too. I found See, it to be, I found it to be cliched one, and boring. It was shallow and pedantic. That's right. <laughs> one of the problems with the show is like, I'll watch a movie and then like a few weeks later, you guys will watch it, or the other way around. Like, Callum yeah. will watch it, and I'll be like, oh, I've got that on Blu-ray too. I'll watch it. So we can't have a proper discussion until later. No, that's fine. But then by that point. It's it, been a while since one of us has watched it. It gives time for reflection. Yeah, That's but true. also, That's y- what I've been you you, f- so. you forget quickly. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's correct. Just write the notes down in your letterbox review. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. that's one thing I've actually thought about doing recently is writing stuff down. At least not maybe not while I'm watching the movie because that obviously takes away from that's, the yeah, but that, like soon after I've watched the movie, writing things down. That's uh, what get I, a letterbox account, man. Yeah. We're all on it. Yeah. I, I just do it in my notes app where I'm like, if I watch it a t like Loki or whatever, like I'll I watched I watched Loki season two and I made some notes and then if we talk about it a year from now when You've you guys eventually watch it, watch it, I can go back because I'm not going to remember. Or well, whatever. letterbox is getting TV this year. Apparently. Finally, yeah, because I haven't started because I've only got they've got like mini series and stuff and one season shows, but I haven't been adding those because I'm like, no, if yeah. I can't add all TV, I'm not going to add any. That'll be interesting. All right, you got anything else for us, Callum? Or that's all today? Uh, no, that's about it for me. Um, shout out to the prophecy though for having a kind a kind of weird dark story though, like the way that the story rocks out is. Like Christopher Walken has to find the most evil soul in the world because that's going to help him win the fight in heaven, and it's like the soul of a dead American general. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, like, we did talk about American politicians last episode or the episode yeah. before, where it's like they are pretty evil. Apologies to Dick Cheney once again. No, <laughs> no. Right. What else have you been watching, Alan? Anything interesting? No, I um, I think she's just evil. Like, I, uh, I'd spend a lot of time on the internet rather yeah. than watching TV shows Doom and scrolling. Oh, well, do, is yeah. there anything else you want to bring up on the show? It doesn't have to be movies or TV. What else have you been doing? I have been monitoring the uh, 
Mr. Donald Trump and his efforts to uh, get on ballots, but I think that's a, definitely a topic for another time. We used to do Saturday Review. When was the last time we did that? A year ago? Probably. A long time ago. If we still got the... We still got the time slot. We still got the time Election slot. Election cycles <laughs> yeah. uh, taking on. Al is a committee member in the station now. He'll make sure he doesn't yeah. lose it. <laughs> let's let's, let's, let's bring it back. Every, every week is going to be new. What did Donald Trump say this time? He did say that you can throw a glass of water on top of a magnet and that'll stop the magnet from working. <laughs> <laughs> not put the magnet in the water not pour the water on top of the magnet no you throw the glass of water onto the magnet glass it all I guess and that will allegedly stop the magnet from working don't laugh that's the president of the United <laughs> States first of respect I don't want to live on this planet anymore <laughs> I'm so sick uh, of it yeah. everything sucks oh, Cal, Cal was promising me to do uh, the soundboard don't be rude all right. I think we've used that enough. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we have we'll to refresh, refresh it for the, next week. Yeah. Have you still got my list I sent you of the uh, somewhere? Oh, right, I'll send it, it to you again. You let me know. Um, we need the what a load of barnacles. I, we need to get we need to get some Homer Simpson singing some and some stuff. Oh, There's a skeptical fish guy. Whenever mm. you see something crap happening, yeah. yeah. Um, what are you been watching, James? Uh, Nobody cares. Move I'll, on. I'll, <laughs> or behave. D- I'll, see, I'll do it again. Is, don't be rude. This is why I can't have Alm on the show. He derails it all. <laughs> Sorry, um, I thought you were Matt. We do this to Matt all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been watching a few things, but I'll just talk about like two newer releases. One is Next Goal Wins, Taika Waititi's oh, new movie. Um, I enjoyed it. It's definitely worth watching, especially uh, you know if you just want to kind of... It's a pretty standard, feel-good, underdog kind of sports comedy. Uh, based on the true story of the American Samoa soccer team, who was like the worst team in the world. They like never scored a goal. They got brutally defeated by Australia, like 31 to nil, something like that. Um, and it's based on the true story of like a, a American coach who comes over to um, sort of train them. And if they're not going to win, like at least they can get one goal and feel better about themselves kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like this feel good underdog story. Um, and it's got Taika Waititi's sense of humor. Um, and it's, yeah, it's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's great. It's not Taika Waititi's best, but it's nice to see a non Marvel movie from him again. Yeah. Um, and also like, yeah, could use more fleshing out characters and some of the story and stuff. And the filmmaking could have, um, you know, being a bit better, but it's definitely worth watching if you just want to laugh for ninety minutes or whatever. If I if it ever comes out on Blu-ray, I'll add it to the stack. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's definitely worth watching. Um, I also watched uh, Yorgos Lanthimos's Poor Things, which is one of the best movies I've seen in oh. the twenty twenty three. Yeah. Only, Stone one for that one. Yeah. It's pretty racy. Is it as racy oh, as it's led to, be- yeah, it's, led to there's, believe? There's a lot of nudity, a lot of sex scenes. Um, I better not watch it then. Yeah, not for your sensitive eyeballs. Not for, <laughs> not for our listeners. Uh, uh, what uh, born? Other Gen Zs. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. um, that's the thing, apparently. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, it's very like I'm a huge uh, Yorgos Lanthimos fan. Um, uh, you know, he did The Lobster and uh, Killing of a Sacred Deer and um, Dog Tooth and stuff like that. Like, he he's really interesting director. So, as soon as this was announced, I'm like, I'm there day one. And it came out on Boxing Day and, like, the day after or, or that, like, I went. So, you lied. What's that? You're on there, like, what, day two or day three? Well, <laughs> yeah, we had the show on Boxing Day. We did. Excuse Would me. You, yeah, but then you'd be like, oh, James, uh, leaving us in the lurch. Um, yeah, so anyway, but I, I saw it as soon as I could because I was like, I really yeah. want to see this. And it was really good. Like, I've heard good things. 2023 had so many great movies. And I was considering asking you, I'm like, are we doing a best of year? Or we just, I think it's kind I of, think, po- there's too many. Yeah, there's too many. And also, there's a few I want to catch up on before I do any sort of ranking or list and also after last year where i overdid it with yeah. 2022 movies i'm kind of like eh. still top five but um <laughs> yeah after, there's a couple of movies i want to see and also we talked about because we're in australia we get everything yeah. late yeah. um so there's gotta still... wait till the middle of 2024 for the yeah exactly <laughs> there's stuff coming out in yeah. march which has <laughs> yeah. been out in, for months in 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 the u.s so uh yeah i mean maybe 
maybe later we can do more a few 2023 sort of highlights or whatever but yeah poor things is definitely straight near the top for me one of the best movies uh i've seen of 2023 movies probably my favorite yorgos since the lobster and just a really weird interesting movie like it, it's got this kind of not steampunk but this kind of weird fantasy kind of look to it a uh, really interesting cinematography um really colorful um it's got this jean pierre Jeunet, you know the guy who did amelie and um, city of lost children it's got that oh, kind of cool. vibe um and then it's got like it's very very funny um and you know kind of like you said out racy and outrageous um but then there's also like an actual sort of heart to it and a and a sort of sort of uh, growth to the characters emma and stone's uh doing some business this uh in 2023 because yeah. she did the oh, curse yeah curse one more episode left of the curse then we gotta talk about that i've got to catch up yeah. so good i've been watching yellowstone not yellowstone um yellow jackets let's get those names oh yeah first. yellow jackets is good um hopefully season three comes out although soon although i'm on my public platform here hmm. to call out paramount plus yeah, call them out. There's a weird sound issue on Yellow Jacket Season 2. Only Season 2. That's the only program I've noticed for on the entire app. Hmm. Where there's an audio track issue where the sound, the audio track of the video file that they use doesn't start until like 10 seconds into the actual That's video. That's annoying. And you can hear like the production beep. Huh. Oh. Yeah, like actually, it's really interesting to actually watch because you hear like the beep and then like the showtime oh, music kind yeah. of starts. So there's an actual misalignment somewhere that's really frustrating. Mm. And I'm like, well, I have no way to watch it. Mm. This is why we sail the seven seas. I'm not admitting to anything. No, allegedly. Um, but yeah, streaming is a joke. It's getting worse and worse. It's getting more and more expensive. Physical media forever. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> This is um, a weird episode. This is a weird episode. No, some of the best episodes are the weird ones, all right? It's our first episode back. It's Yeah, well, I, we yeah. haven't done it in a week. I've forgotten how to, how <laughs> yeah, to do we, it. <laughs> yeah. We'll end on a hopeful note. Do you know what movie I added to my stack? What's that? Paris, Texas by Wimothy Wenders. Oh, so I think, was it Nathan, you told me you ordered this? I, or Callum? It, I bought it. Yeah. Ray, yes. As soon as you told me that, I said, that's one of the best movies I've ever seen. One of my favorite movies of all time. No joke, it is next level amazing. You know, directed by Wim Wenders, one of Hideo Kojima's favorite directors of last year for Perfect well, Days. Well, Perfect was, Days, we all I, loved. I was, yeah, that I was, was one of the best movies of 2023. Kind of, Perfect Days kind of, I guess, pushed me to, to yeah. buy that one. If, I saw you, it on sale. if you watch two Wim Wenders movies, it's Wings of Desire and Paris, Texas. That's all you need to see. And then, if you want to, like, I've seen most of his movies, he's one of my favorite directors. But yeah, Wings of Desire and um, Paris, Texas, two of the greatest movies I've ever seen, two of my favorite movies. Just incredible. Incredible. I'll get on it. Yeah. I reckon that's all the time we've got for tonight, guys. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Um, Again, listeners, I hope we're going to do a lot more with the show this year going forward, Um, but thank you for being with us. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's been a long ride. Yeah. Yes. Um, We're just getting started. We are. That's it. Thanks for listening, everyone. Please like and share the Tuesday Review uh, socials at Tuesday Review AU. Mm-hmm. So that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Threads, Blue Sky News Must. Yeah. And the YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Which is the same at Tuesday Review AU. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, if you put that Tuesday Review, it'll come yeah. up too. Yeah. Um, we've got new videos coming out every day uh, of, of old they're episodes. Old, they're old, up, the video uploads of the old audio can episodes I, but can, eventually we'll have more yeah, video content. content can i say to listeners who might be looking at old <laughs> old videos <laughs> they are a product of their time yeah, yeah. and yeah. less experienced hosts i make some jokes that i wouldn't be comfortable making with yeah, making yeah. We're, we're 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 different we're we're old we're 
yeah. more mature now. Yeah, please. On the air, we're more mature. <laughs> please don't. That was pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah. no, hey, hey, uh, Before COVID, does, like, anything yeah. goes. Please don't, please whatever, don't judge us based on... Just what download. We, just, just dislike. Whatever, <laughs> you know, wh- whatever yeah. happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's whatever it. happens pre-COVID stays It was a different time. Yeah. Uh, oh. No, but I'm being quite serious. It's like, you know, if you're, if you're listening to the new episodes and you're like, wow, these guys suck. It's like, it does get marginally better. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've gotten better and worse... In different ways. Yeah, but <laughs> hopefully, I'm hoping the new content will help us to oh, yeah, yeah. sort of branch. Because at the moment, we're just kind of doing things um, like, you know, just doing things casually. Um, you know, just like, let's let's talk about something we've seen or, you know, review yeah, a movie yeah, real yeah. quick. Whereas I think if we interview more people and, and focus yeah. on t- topics and whatever, like the content will be hopefully. Oh, better. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned. For all that. Yep. We'll be back next week. Adios, cousins.